Hello, beautiful people. My name is Nistaku, and welcome to a game called Portrait of a Ghost. Um, this is a visual novel game, and I think what I read is that the protagonist is a bad guy, but the ghost is a good person? Part 1. How to profit off of grief. Yeah, it's definitely got the whole, um, what is it? The auto save load. That's for visual novels, right? Right this way, madam. Please. Make yourself comfortable. I noticed this game on um, Itch.io and the art style looked really good and it had a lot of good comments. Um, and there's multiple endings, so that will be cool to experience. Uh, but why don't we have a chat before we begin? Tell me more about your dear husband. There, there. Yes, bless his poor soul. In, mod in a modest sitting room with curtains open to the afternoon sun, the window perched like a shadow in the arms of a plush velvet seat. With her veil pulled back from her head, delicate fingers clutching the handkerchief she brought repeatedly to her large, sorrowful eyes, she made the perfect image, picture perfect, or we a killer, of the poor grieving soul that the gentleman sitting before her so often received. Oh, that's her! A poet might have described her glistening eyes as deep pools of wretched misery or oceans that had no end. But Arthur Hope was not a poet. His only observation about the woman's face was his hope that she wouldn't burst into tears during the sitting. Oh, how rude! Arthur made a living off of grief, of course, but dealing with the grieving was a rather tiresome facet of his profession. Oh, stand up guy! As the window went on about her poor deceased lover, his gentle and charitable nature, and so on, he carefully prodded her, now and again, about the man's general features, forming an image in his head of how to best shape his next creation. Oh, is he a painter? Oh. Hmm. A young man with a lines made of bright hair, average height, deep-set eyes. I'm sure I have a plate matching that description somewhere. It's a good thing I had that wig in handy. What? Ah, uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, does he dress up as dead people? I have a real picture to take first. There are so many things I wish I said to him. Oh, he told me not to worry, but I... I'm sure he was a wonderful man, madam. I'm so sorry once again for your loss. You know, I always tell my clients I can never guarantee when my camera might capture a spirit. But today, I feel almost certain he might be in the room with us. Oh! Why don't we take your picture now and see for ourselves? Oh, yes. Of course. Make yourself at home. I'll be right back. So what is it? Is he like saying he's um he does like seances? Center your subject within the frame. Oh. Oh 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 what? Oh, that should leave enough space for what? I didn't read that. I was dry. We're ready to begin. Please stay still until I tell you when the exposure is complete. Ah, uh, yes. Say cheese. If you're here, if you're there, my darling. Please show yourself, please. Oh, so he like fakes ghosts? Arthur Hope hadn't always been a charlatan. Once he had been arty, a shy and painfully honest boy with angelic blue eyes and a limitless imagination. He spent every chance he could in his uncle's library, losing himself in tales of monsters and terror. They were never so frightening as the real world around him, he could honestly say. Honestly, however, would rarely turn out to help him. Honesty had not stopped his uncle's cane, nor his withering looks. Ooh. It did not protect him from his schoolmates' vicious pranks, nor impress the teachers. Gray, hollowed men with thinning hair and thick spectacles at the various boarding schools that always inevitably sent him back home. Jeez. It hadn't always been his fault. One had simply closed due to an unfortunate scarlet fever outbreak. No, it was a liar's world. By the time Arthur Hope first found himself 
behind the lens of his late uncle's sliding box camera. He'd built well, if not a kingdom of lies, then at least a barony. At just a shy of 30, his schemes had brought him an unsteady income in the regard of a handful of influential friends, few of whom his, knew his background or how he truly borrowed from them. Oh, oh. So he was stealing from his friends? How lovely. Arthur's uncle had taken up photography in his life and having no family save for his troublesome nephew, had left the young man the aging house he turned into his studio along with a small fortune and equipment after his death. Arthur had little interest in the profession beforehand, but even he could not resist the allure of a burgeoning technology that was so much like magic, capturing light through a mechanical eye, preserving an image of the world a single moment in time. It was something just like the tales of mystery he grew up on. The ability to capture his own likeness was, of course, its own draw. He had a fair face, he was not shy to admit, and would like to, a reminder of it should he ever have the misfortune of living a long life. Okay. Carefully, he slid the plate holder out from the camera's wooden frame. A pile of discarded glass plates and blurry albumen prints sat on a table beside him, the fruits of his earlier attempts. I have a good feeling about this one. Let's get you to the dark room, shall we? It was the print formed in the early afternoon sun. Okay. That Arthur Hope saw his uncle's ghost in the frame beside him. Oh, oh that's creepy. Oh, spirit caught on camera. Oh, do we get to click on these? Oh, oh. Oh, and that's that. Why does the widow look like that? Why? Wait, he's here? Is this the uncle? What? Ghost photographs, shock world, spirit photography, the man behind the camera. Huh. Okay. What does it want me to do? Does it want me to match it up? Can I match it up? Is that matching? Is that, is that what you want? What do you want from me? Huh? Huh? What do you want? Oh! I did it. It was only after a sleepless night of waiting for a spirit to accost him, then furiously rifling through his uncle's equipment, that he realized he'd made a simple and perfectly ordinary mistake. Photographic plates have to be cleaned very thoroughly to remove any imprint left behind by a previous negative. Arthur, an amateur, had not done so. Thus, a trace of one of his uncle's self-portraits remained on the glass plate he'd used for his own. Oh, is that how he's going to use to scam people? Ah, oh, so that is... Wait, which is the uncle and which is the widow? This has to be the uncle, because the widow was right here, right? But the fact that the image had lined up so perfectly was nothing short of a miracle. A miracle that sparked the idea for a brand new, lucrative story in Arthur's mind. Ah, oh, so this is his backstory. It's him! Oh, my darling, I knew you were with me all this time. Thank you, Mr. Hope, thank you. He looks so peaceful. I, I, I don't know what to say. Overwhelmed, the widow began to sob. Arthur patted her back gently. I can earn more if I make them come back for a sitting or two before I give them a spirit. But, gah, I felt sorry for her this time. I'm growing soft. Oh, yeah, you're growing soft, all right. Not, all, not at all, madam. It brings me joy to know you have a guardian spirit watching over you, even beyond the grave. It can be, I can be at peace now, thanks to you. Please, take this. She handed him a stack of crisp banknotes, far more than the agreed-upon sum. Oh! I can't possibly, madam. Oh, yes, you can. I insist. <laughs> not a bad use of time, after all. <laughs> wow. Part two, portrait of a girl. Are we just gonna start taking fake- I thought it was actually taking real pictures of ghosts, not faking it. Late in the evening, a knock came at Arthur's door. The widow had been his last appointment of the day, 
but it was all too common for unwanted visitors to arrive long after closing. Of course. Sometimes it was the press, sometimes an angry septic, sometimes a wretched grieving soul who would beg for his charity. Arthur. Ignored it? Oh, we get choices! I forgot there's multiple endings to this game! Let's go to the door! No reason to ignore it! Arthur crept down the staircase to the entryway of the old house and quietly approached the door. Hello! He carefully looked through the spy hole. Who is it? Stood there. In the rain was a girl. Oh, I don't like you. She didn't seem to have an umbrella or raincoat. It was a miracle she wasn't drenched thoroughly. Perhaps she arrived by carriage? But Arthur hadn't heard one approaching, and none were stopped in the street. Ooh, hello, are you actually a ghost? Once more, she rapped on his door. Arthur wondered how long she'd been standing there. He decided to. Oh, we're going for it. We're going for it. Open it. Open it. Let's see what's happening. With some hesitation, Arthur swung the door open. Hello? Can I help you, miss? Ah, she's not scary. In the gloom of the rain, lit with only the light coming from the hall, the young woman was surprisingly lovely. She looked about twenty, with a face so fair she could have been a porcelain doll, if not for the deep brown eyes that stared with such vivid intensity from behind her dark lashes. Locks of her chestnut hair spilled from a bonnet trimmed with wide ribbons and silk roses. Her gown was made of rich green satin and fine white lace, and looked expensive, yet at least a decade out of style. The girl clearly came from money, but it seemed that she, or her guardians, had dated taste. Oh, is she a ghost? Are you the photographer? Her voice was soft, but did not betray any nervousness. Her brown eyes stared right at him, almost, Arthur felt, straight through him. Well, yes, but my friends call me Arthur. I don't wish to become your friend, sir. But if you are indeed who you say you are, then I require your services. Making demands straight away, eh? Definitely a rich lass, perhaps even highborn. In that case, best to hear her out. What can I do for you, miss? You're the photographer, are you not? I need you to take my picture. I'd be happy to make an appointment with you, miss, but I can't guarantee a spirit will appear. I don't want anyone or anything else in the photograph. I just need my picture taken. <gasps> she is a ghost. A likely story. She wouldn't be the first to ask for a simple, ordinary sitting, while secretly hoping for a ghost to appear. Well, I'm fully booked for quite a while, but I'd be happy to arrange a sitting- You have no one with you now, so why can't you take my picture? Miss, it's late. Lamplight makes for a poor image, and I'd have to wait until daylight to make the print in any case. Might I also emphasize how inappropriate it is for a young lady to call upon a man uninvited after dark? Please. One picture, it's all I ask. Please. I've been waiting so very long. Gah. <sighs> I should. As long as you have money! Hear her out. She's a ghost. Let's take a photo of a ghost! Can I at least ask why you need a photograph so badly? There's somebody I must send my picture to. Somebody who I haven't seen in a very long time who needs to see how I look. How I've changed. There are oh, there are plenty of other studios that could accommodate you. None of them would open their doors to me. None of them are like you. There truly is nobody in this world like you, sir. Oh... Well, if there's anything I can resist besides a large purse, it's flattery. And let's admit, let's admit it, that sweet face isn't an easy one to refuse. Being around sobbing fools all day really has turned me soft. Fine, you've convinced me. Please step this way, miss. Edith. Edith Harper. Ooh! Can I offer you any tea? None, thank you. She can't drink it! Please, can we hurry? As you wish. She's so a ghost. She's so- I forget that it's like upside down. It's so weird. Alright. 
Oh, that's her. What if I don't want to look at her? Not yet. I want to look around. Okay. All right. Say cheese. How do you want to... Is that good? How do you want to do this? Do we... It's like the late whatever hundreds. So, like, do you guys, like, get at an angle? Are you guys not, like, a center person? Ah, there we go. We'll need more candles. I can't get an image like this. Technology is awfully inconvenient. You could have come by during daylight, you know. Oh, we're doing this again. Oh, <gasps> she's not there! <laughs> she's not there! Creepy! Wait, where did she go? Are you ready yet? Oh, oh! Hello! Uh, yes, we can begin now. Ugh, what's come over me? First, I'll let some arrogant, ill-mannered girl walk over me like a carpet, and now I'm seeing things? You're fine! 59, 60. Done. Oh yeah, you have to hold. You can move now, miss. Is that all? Good. I'll go prepare the plate now. But again, you'll have to come back tomorrow for the print, Miss Harper. I open at... I'll visit you at the same time tomorrow evening. Good night, sir. Wait. Uh, Arthur stopped her, concerned. No, he didn't. He let her go. Ooh! I, I can't. He stopped her. I just want to be like so like confrontational for this one. Do you need me to call you a carriage? It's awfully rainy. Oh, that's sweet of you, but decorum isn't necessary. You don't have to act concerned for me. She smiled a little sadly, but quickly turned her back and again headed for the doorway. I'll be back soon. Good night. Disregarding his protest, she slipped from the room, though the entryway and out through the entryway and out the front door into the rainy night. Should he even ask to borrow an umbrella? Dang it, I forgot to discuss payment too. Well hopefully she brings enough with her tomorrow. Now I have to get this place ready before it dries. After that perhaps I'll retire early. It certainly has been an interesting night. Oh, it has! Oh, it has! We're seeing ghosts! So maybe... So it was a ghost of his uncle, and it wasn't actually a smudge. I'm assuming. That night, Arthur Hope had strange dreams. Of what? Part three? Phantoms? I feel like it's going by so fast. Chill wind rocked the house, ra rapping against the walls. Figures crept around the edges of Arthur's vision, flickering like flames, hovering like moths. A weight covered his entire body. He could not shift or twist his limbs. The blankets engulfing him felt like earth packed with stones. Heavy. Cold. Damp. Oh. Something wriggled under his clothes, creeping up his neck. Over the side of his cheek into his eye sockets. Oh, there it is. Another crawled into his open mouth. Oh, like that? Slithered down his windpipe. He tried to scream, but not a sound came. Oh, I hate when that happens in dreams. His jaw was locked in place. His lungs were still. More writhing things engulfed him, eating at his flesh, digging between his bones. Oh, ew, what a dream. Arthur jerked violently out of bed, gasping. Wakey, wakey! Cold air filled his lungs, bringing him back to the waking world. He rubbed his eyes, then struck a match and lit the candle at his bedside table. The flame danced as he lifted it, gingerly in the dark. No use trying to go back to sleep after that. Yeah, I feel you. When I get a bad nightmare, ooh, I'm staying up for a little bit. Ugh, water first, then I'll head to my study and read. Stop it! What? Stop it! What? Haunted! Haunted house! A noise rang out in the dark. Arthur listened. Sure, it must be the rain on the roof or a shutter against the windows. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No! But the sound was too close to come from outside. No, it was more like. Oh, it's in this room! What falls? The creaking of a floorboard. Oh, is someone in the house? 
Good gosh, did someone break in while I was asleep? Quietly, Arthur reached bed beside his bed for the familiar weight of his uncle's cane, then carefully, cautiously, stood up. Hello? Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. What's that? What's this? What's this? What's that? What's this? What am I clicking? Oh, I don't like this. Oh, let me go back to reading. I like reading. What do you want me to do? Okay, we're just gonna... Uh-huh. Looking. Oh! Get a hold of yourself, Art. Burglar is nothing. You've dealt with worse. Oh! Uh. <laughs> Still nothing. Oh, this is this pounding in my chest. It's all thanks to that blasted dream. Gosh, I... Uh, this is like my biggest fear for someone to break in. It is awful. Awful, awful, awful. Hello? I know you're there. Come out. Please. Nothing. Did I imagine it? I'm sure I heard a sound. The sound came again. But thicker. Heavier. Clunking along the wooden floorboards. Whoa! Is it a big man? Arthur continued through the house, heartbeat growing faster, louder, more erratic with every step. His grip never left the heavy weight of the wooden cane. I'll teach you to ne I'll teach you never to lie to me again, boy. I didn't, I swear it. Then who left it out in the rain? This book was worth more than your sorry hide. Oh, is this with his uncle? But the cane seemed to grow heavier in his hand, then warmer, then white hot, like a flame. Arthur jerked and dropped it from his hand. It landed on the floorboards with a thud. He brought his searing hand to the candlelight. It was burned straight through the bone. Are we in a dream? Leaving ruined, melted flesh on his blackened skeleton. Oh, we are. Right? Fire engulfed his body. Skin melted from his flesh, crisping and charring. Jeez! He let go of the candle, screaming. Tiny flame licked at the wood and set it alight. Everything turned to smoke and fire and dust. Arthur tried to run, to scream again, but black smoke filled his lungs. His body felt like it was buried in earth. Hot, burning earth. Nothing left him now but bones and ash. And then there was nothing left at all. Nothing but darkness. Stop it! <laughs> Stop! And the sound of that infernal cane. Arthur Hope's remains curled up on the floor, writhing like an insect, uttering pitiable, choking cries that sputtered into rasping gasps. And there, as he lay on the floor, in the corner of his eye. Blurry, barely visible, like a photographic negative, an afterimage, a phantom, a figure, ghostly white. <gasps> oh! Okay, 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 we're saving. We're saving. Oh! Ho! Oh! Ho! Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, we have a lot of save options. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, okay, I'm assuming this is autosave. Oh, creepy. Oh, creepy. I didn't like that. Oh, I didn't like that one bit. I'm going to leave it here. Um, uh, t uh just take me to main menu. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to leave it here, okay? That was actually really interesting. It's so creepy because it's, like, quiet to me. It's, like, so quiet. I might have to raise the volume on my end, but it's so quiet. Um... But yeah, I was going to play, uh, what was that one game? Look Outside? I was going to play Look Outside, but um, they updated it and then my save is not loading. So I don't know what happened. I'm sorry we didn't get a Look Outside because I really want to play it and finish it. Um, but <laughs> thank you guys so much for your support of liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope you enjoy this game. And honestly, I'm really curious on all, all the endings work. It seems really creepy and I, you know, I'm a visual novel person lately. I've been really into visual novel games.
and um i just hope you enjoy them as much as i do <laughs> thank you guys so much for your support and um yeah have a blessed day guys bye